How's it going YouTube? In today's video we are going to be reviewing the Camp Chef Flat Top Grill. This is a FTG 900 model. This is their six burner model that they offer. Uh, this particular uh, series of griddles uh, comes in three different sizes, a three burner, a four burner, and a six burner. So um, a lot of what I say in this video is going to apply to pretty much all of them because they're built the exact same way. The only difference is, is the amount of burners that they have to offer. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, let's go ahead and just take a quick walk around of the unit itself. Uh, the griddle is pretty heavy, most of the weight being on the griddle top, but the total weight of the unit is, a, is about 160 pounds, so it's definitely not light. Um, as I mentioned, this is a six burner model. Um, it does have six stainless steel uh, tubes inside of it at 12,000 BTUs a piece. So this unit comes in at about 72,000 total BTUs, so this does crank out a lot of heat. This has two side folding shelves, which makes it nice and easy. There's no screws you have to take off at the bottom to remove the shelves. The shelves can uh, fold to the side here. This particular shelf on this one here doesn't fold all the way down because the propane tank is in the way. Um, here in the back of the unit, there is a, a support brace on here to uh, stabilize the unit just because of the size of it. The total length of the unit from side to side with the shells fully extended comes in at about 6 feet 5 inches long. So it does take up quite a bit of real estate so just be aware of that when uh, deciding to go with this particular model here. I believe with the side shelves folded down it comes in at 58 total inches. So let's go ahead and move our way back to the front of the unit here. Let's go ahead and dive into the, the griddle top itself. The griddle top, like I mentioned, is uh, where most of your weight on this griddle comes from. I don't know the exact weight, but I'm guessing it's about 125 pounds, anywhere from 100 to 125 pounds. So it's it's pretty heavy. It might You might need to take two people to uh, put this top on, on and off here. Uh, when transporting the griddle, um, I do highly recommend taking the griddle top off just because it makes it so much easier and then and then uh, carrying the griddle separately here. The griddle itself is seven gauge um, cold rolled steel. So it is a hefty piece of metal here. Um, the total length from side to side is about 45 and a half inches long. And the width with the grease channel here is um, 20 and a half or 20.5 inches long. Uh, total cooking space without this here is about 19 inches and I do like the actual length of this is because some of the other griddles on the market are kind of long and with it being a little bit longer here like the Blackstone that just means you have to reach over a little bit more and it puts you a little bit closer to the griddle and um, I've had I've stained a few shirts and I've burned my hand having to reach over so I do really like the length of this griddle here Okay, let's see. The one thing I don't like about the actual griddle itself is this hole here. This doesn't cause me too many issues, but it's just extremely uh, small here. As you can see, this is my finger, and and it just it's not big enough to be honest with you. I tend to clog this up quite a bit um, when I'm cooking hash browns and things like that. Um, it hasn't been too much of an issue where all the grease is backed up. I usually just poke it with a stick or a little thin screwdriver or I just unclog it by taking my scraper here and removing the food. Um, typically I just kind of just grab the scraper and throw the food across as you can see because this uh, grease cap or trap here extends past the griddle here but if uh, I recommend with Camp Chef is they extend this with the griddle this size you're gonna have a lot of gunk and food there it's not been a huge problem but it would have been nice if they would have made this a little bit bigger I do like how they put a little nipple on here to direct the actual oil into the cups so you're not gonna have any grease uh, issues falling on the ground or on the lake here which makes it really nice um, I do like these burners. They're pretty decent. They're not the most high quality out here. Uh, these knobs here, these burner knobs, but they are pretty decent quality. I've felt a lot cheaper ones, but, and I, I'm a big fan of the red here. Each one of these has a matchless ignition, as you can hear. So each one of these can be lit independently. And there's six holes, obviously, for each burner here. In case you can't light the unit itself, you can go ahead and get a match. 
we look further down into this griddle here, there's two side shelves here. I don't really necessarily use them too often just because I'm always constantly moving it back and forth and stuff vibrates off. But I do like that they offer that uh, extra space down here. And it just stabilizes the grill and, and helps with the legs being sturdy. When we're looking at the side shelves here, I do like how the fact that they put two holes on each side shelf. So you can add some of these accessories. This is a tool hook holder, I believe it's called. And you can put your utensils here when you're not using them. And on this side here, this... Um, they, this is a paper towel holder. This was a two-piece kit that came in there and I, t I use this quite a bit because I don't like to stick anything on these shelves uh, themselves just because they get way too hot. There's a, probably about a 50 to 70 degree difference from about the middle of the shelf and on and that's just because of all the heat that's just coming out of this and that's why you see slots here to dis dissipate the heat but in reality it helps a little but there needs to be more of these slots because this does get extremely hot this isn't necessarily a camp shift issue this is pretty much every griddle that i own besides the blue rhino where this gets really hot this doesn't get as hot as uh, some of the ones that others that i own but it does get hot so i kind of avoid using them for that reason here All right, guys, before we take the griddle top off, I decided to go ahead and grab the four burner griddle um, off my other unit to give you a good comparison of what the length of this griddle is here. As you can see, there is a pretty big difference when it comes to cooking. You know, that's two or three burgers lengthwise. So this is a fairly large one and it is um, a lot bigger than the four burners you can tell here. I know I gave you some measurements, but it's really tough to visualize it without kind of seeing an example right next to it here. And then I did uh, fail to mention that this griddle, you can level it. So this is a feature that the other ones don't offer. On this particular model, there's two bolts here, one here and one over here, which go up and down uh, depending on uh, where you need to make some adjustments and that's for the right side for the left side these casters um they they do unscrew here uh you can screw them up or down depending on where you need to make your adjustments as well so these are two swiveling casters in the front and on the back they're just two basic wheels so that's what makes it nice with the griddle this size and cooking a lot of grease you definitely want to make sure it's completely level and then i did mention that these side shelves fold down here you typically don't leave this on um i just moved it out of the way just to kind of give you an idea here so these do uh, fold all the way down on the left side and then i told you the right side didn't fold all the way down as you can see it's hitting the propane tank so but let me go ahead and get these griddle tops off here and uh, we'll take a look at the back of the griddle itself and uh, what the inside looks like all right, I went ahead and took off the griddle top here so we can take a closer look um, at the inside of this. The body of the inside of this unit is actually stainless steel here. As you can tell, I have quite a bit of miles on this. I've owned this for a little under a year, and I don't think I've ever taken this top off but a couple times during transport, but you can tell I, I need to do a better job of actually cleaning the unit here. And if you're having trouble with lighting the actual griddle itself, you got these... Uh, these spark igniters here that you can make some adjustments up or down or or put them a little closer to assist with your lighting here um, but there's really not much that uh, is offered on the inside with the four burner model you have uh, actual grates on here and you have flame tamers or whatever the flavorizer bars that you can put on here this uh, the three burner and the six burner option models don't offer that option here to me, that's not necessarily a con or anything. It's just because I never used them in the beginning, so it really didn't affect me here. But for somebody who's looking for something like that, that, that might be a con for you when looking into this particular model here. Um, let's go ahead and just take a closer look at the back of this griddle here. You can see these are the adjustment knobs uh, for leveling the actual griddle here. And it looks like it's just an Allen key or hex key, whatever you want to refer them as, um, here on each side. And then you got this, I don't know what they necessarily call it, but this is more like a heat disbursement plate, is what I would refer to it as. And, and this isn't necessarily flush. I know it's really hard to tell on the camera, but it's slightly elevated. So what it does here is a lot of the heat goes into these little air pockets 
and creates these or goes into these holes and creates little air pockets to help even out the heat and the heat on this griddle is fairly fairly even on the unit i'm pretty surprised the only real hot spots are obviously along the edges here because this is where all the heat's escaping from so this tends to get kind of hot along the edges here so all right guys well i think i covered almost everything the only thing left is uh to talk about here is the actual cover and the price so let me go ahead and uh, put the griddle top back on get the cover on and then we'll uh, wrap up this review I went ahead and put the cover on the actual unit so let's go ahead and just talk about that um the cover itself has a really nice fit and it's almost like a bungee cord at the bottom here where it helps it from uh, blowing off here um it's kind of hard to tell there's the bungee there um the fit is really good it's a little too tight for my liking i wish they would have gave you some extra slack along the sides i mentioned this in one of my other reviews and they still haven't made any changes to it so um i guess it's not as big of an issue as as i'm making it out to be but i'm not a fan of it when taking the cover off this shelf here tends to fall off quite a bit because of how tight it is you can hear when i'm lifting you can see how why it would fall off here so um, in order to avoid that i usually take the shelf off on this side because the shelf doesn't fold all the way down so it doesn't pop off um, as easy as the other side here I don't know what's going on with the material here if I just got a bad run but the actual cover is only about three months old and that's how long it's been outside and I don't know if you can tell in the video but it's almost a chalky purplish whitish color here it's faded completely um, all my previous covers never had this issue outdoor this is a nice rich tan and then you can just see the top here is probably a good example of what the color difference is so i don't really have high hopes that this cover is going to last very long um cam chef needs to come come out with a lid or some sort of support here because if you have this outdoors and it's sitting here and you put stuff on or if a weather or rain gets on top of it, it tends to pull up here and you'll start seeing rust on the griddle itself um, this does get really greasy because uh, as you can see I always keep the griddle uh, nice and oiled so it, this doesn't protect it from touching the griddle itself so they need to come up with a different idea most of the time I just put my utensils in my grease cup and kind of create a TP effect on there but let's talk about the final issue and that is price uh, this unit's not cheap uh, this unit comes in, I believe, at MSRP $600, and you can typically find it for about $499. I just think it's priced a little too high. I kind of went back and forth whether I was going to purchase this or not, and I obviously I opted to, and I'm, I'm glad I did just because I use it almost daily, and um, I do entertain quite a bit, and this cooks for a large crowd. I usually have 30 or 40 people here when I have uh, barbecues and stuff, and this cranks out all the food that I need. I love the size because two people can actually cook on this unit itself um, comfortably so I can get some help when cooking burgers or steaks or things like that. Um, I would like to have seen the price at $450 and how I came up with that is the four burner unit comes in at about $300. That's $75 a burner. So if I'm, you're adding two extra burners to this model, that's an additional 150. So 300 plus 150 is 450. So I think it really needs to either go on sale or come in at 449 is I think is the price point this really needs to be. Would I buy this again? Probably. Would I recommend it to somebody? Um, maybe. It really depends whether you need a griddle this size. The four burner was awesome and it suited my needs for a very long time. But as soon as I saw them come out with this model, I just I, I looked into it and, and decided to upgrade here. Um, Cam Chef, the only real issue I really had um, with this unit was these brackets for the actual shelves. The welds were pretty crappy on it. They had a bad run on it, and I contacted Camp Chef, and they completely busted out to where uh, my shelves, they, they wouldn't hang anymore. So I was out, out of shelf for a little while until I called them up. Um, they answered the phone right away, and about three days I had new brackets, and they apologized, and that's when they informed me they had a bad run on those. But other than that, it really hasn't given me much issues. I've had to adjust the igniters or the spark igniter there a few times because the first burner just gave me some issues. Um, overall, it's been pretty trouble free. I haven't, I haven't had anything major go on besides the brackets and, and Camp Chef uh, support uh, came through on that. But 
I think I pretty much covered everything in this review. Um, if you have any other questions, comments, or if I left something out and you wanted to know, go ahead and leave them down below, guys, and I'll get to it as fast as I can. Thanks, guys.